Hey pilots, Drain Man here and today I've got a very special video. In today's video we are going to build, like completely build with motors and stack and camera and the whole works, we are going to build the Sector V3, well the Sector 5 V3. And this is a super cool drone frame, I actually reviewed it not too long ago. If you haven't checked that video out, go down to the video description and check out that video. But in this video, we are going to build this thing. Let's go! Oh, oh. Alright, first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and pull this top plate off so we can get inside. Alright, so we are now under the hood. As you can see, this has plenty of space to work on, and we've even got a little hidden compartment we can use. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and mount our ESC, because that is our core of the entire deal. Once I have that mounted, then we'll go ahead and move into installing our motors. Now, in order to mount this, we need to use some stack screws. Well, fortunately, they've given us 30 by 30 and 20 by 20 options. They did include stack screws. And they are really nice gold screws and I'm excited to try them out. So what we would do is we would drop these down, boom, boom. There it is, all four ready to go. Wow, look at that, that looks really sharp. So now let's go ahead and drop on the ESC and see what it looks like. All right, so let's take our ESC, our Hobby Wing ESC, we're gonna drop it on, see what it looks like. Oh yeah, as you can see, I've got the perfect amount of space right there. Everything looks beautiful and tight. There is one big glaring issue. This is not the XT60 I'm gonna use. This is just the one that was on there. We will put a new one, but as you can see, I've got a big old DJI air unit that's gonna go here. So all this space is taken, and that's not gonna give me much space for this. But that's okay, because we've got all this space up here. Our camera's probably going to be somewhere over here, so we should not have a problem taking this, spinning it around, and mounting it in this fashion. All right, so take a look at that. That is beautiful. Brand new, not a speck of dirt on it. That is awesome. All right, so if we take our camera plates, and let's go ahead and set this thing up real quick, just so that we can get a feel for what is going on. All right, so that is going to mount just like that. All right, so now if you want to go with one screw mounting only, you can have literally any angle you want. If you want to do two screws, which I recommend, I, I don't ever recommend mounting your camera with only one screw. If you do two screws, you can have as low as that to as high as, wow. That looks probably about perfect, believe it or not. So I'm gonna lock it down based on that. And if we need to change it, we can later. It's not like it's stuck like that forever. All right, so here it is. This is the little TPU adapter. I'm kind of excited to try it out. I've never had one. Oh. Oh. That made me a little nervous. Oh, oh wow, that's pretty sharp. All right, so diving this in here, let's see what we got. I might run under with this wire, so that's another reason why we're doing this now. You don't want to ever mount this after and find out that you wanted your wire to be under. But, I don't know, maybe you don't want it under because if you need to pull this out after, then you got to pull everything out. So, it's a tough decision to make. Now, this here is for the Crossfire people. Because you can put an Immortal T here, or if you're FR Sky, you can use these. I do not use neither, so although I put it on just for the frame review, I am not going to use it now. So if you are doing the DJI Air unit and you are using this TPU that comes with it, it does have an orientation, and if you have it correct, not only does it work better, it even looks better. All right, so let's go ahead and get our XT60 wired up and ready to go. If you plan to use this little carriage here, I want you to note that you can't go above 14 gauge wire. I do believe that 14 gauge is gonna be plenty with a 6S quad with 1750 motors, I think it's gonna be fine. 
And then I'm gonna desolder these. I'm gonna solder those on and get that wired up and put on to here. Now, before we get too far with our XT60 lead, we should probably make sure that we've got our wiring figured out for our harness because we've got to power and wire our ESE to our flight controller. So we need to have this connector figured out. The Hobby Wings uh, ESE is not native to the Fox here F722. Will they work together? Yes, and they will work together great. You can't just plug and play with it. You've actually got to set it up a little bit. So this flight controller does come with a ginormous pack of options. I mean, you've got plugs and wires for days. Now I do want to take a quick second to look at this, which is truly impressive. All right, this is a beautiful board. If you wanna take a look and talk about layout versus design versus compatibility, I mean, this is the way to go. So as you can see, we've got not connected, so I won't connect that. Then we've gotta go ground to ground, bat to bat, and then we've got current right there, current right there, and then we need to get all four motors wired up. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's go ahead and get it done. All right, so there we go. Our grommets are installed. We've got some dampening now. This is really nice. If you look here, you can see the grommets are actually bigger on the bottom, which allows space for our connectors to have a place to be while this is still being soft mounted. All right, here's our frame starting to come together. Huh? Huh? All right, it's just got the air unit in it, that's all. And this is just a 3D printed vise. I went ahead and did the Lakers colors just for fun. But all this is, is basically a vise that is extremely affordable. So there you go. So we'll take off our ground and then we'll put on this ground. We'll take off our positive and then we'll put on this positive, just like that. So quite possibly I'll do like this. And soldering your XT60, I mean, that is your main power. That is everything that's going to supply your quad with everything it needs. So don't be shy. Don't be a, a cheapo with the solder. So I'm going to go ahead and put my negative here. You're gonna to wanna to make sure your iron is turned up hot. You don't wanna to try to solder big leads with an iron that's not all the way hot. So now we're headed in that direction. So even though we're just looking at an ESC by itself, it does look silly going off like that. But once I put this in the quad, we can turn our wires like that. We can come up through our little guard and then we should be able to come around. So let's go ahead and slide these through. That came out perfect. And now remember, if you have this type of XT60 lead, it helps prevent you from having to use heat shrink, but you've gotta slide this on first or else it's useless. All right, so there you go. We now have our XT60 on and ready to go, looking fresh to death. All right, so there we go. We are rocking and a rolling. So before we keep going, I wanna go ahead and bust open one of these motors and I wanna go ahead and mount it and just take a look, see how everything fits. And look at that motor. All right, so let's see what they gave us for mounting screws. Oh, okay. So we got four little ones and four bigger ones. And we'll give these a shot. They would normally probably work, but with my 3D print, it's probably gonna be not long enough. It is nearly like one thread protruding. All right, so let's go ahead and pull this screw out because we clearly need something bigger. All right, pilot, so I've got here a little kit. It's got all the different sizes you can think of for um, M3 type screws. Uh, they're good for motors. They're good for stack stuff, all kinds of stuff. We use M3 unless you're building a lot of micros, you might need M2. But for the most part, you need M3 and that's what I got these for. So I'll drop a link down in the video description if you're interested in buying a kit like this. But what I've got here is I found a screw that's a little bit longer because the ones that come with it actually are not long enough. If I go ahead and screw this in, I got a feeling this is gonna be the size that I need. And by the looks of it, if you can see that, 
So it looks like it's sticking out enough to grab the motor, but not too much. I can see that the top of this screw is exactly at the end of those threads. I mean, it is literally perfect. Now, something else very important and one magical tool. If you don't have any of this, I'm gonna put a link for you, but you gotta have this stuff. Do not be putting your motors in without it. And then I will put myself a nice little amount right there. All right, so the next thing I'll do is I'll line up the next hole, and it's about right there. And I'll just dip the tip of the screw in there and give it a spin. You don't want too much, but you don't want too little. My only fear is that it'll rip through the TPU, but I don't think that's going to happen. Looking underneath, the screws are not protruding at all. My uh, bumper slash skid is nice and tight. All right, pilots, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna work on this a little bit more. I'm not gonna bore you to death, and then I'll meet you back here and we'll talk about what happened. Let's go. Okay, pilots, look at that. That is gorgeous. So now I went ahead, and as you've noticed, I haven't connected anything to this yet. Yeah, maybe the harness, but I haven't wired everything else up yet. And I did that for a reason, and that reason is, is now I can easily gain access to my ESCs. So that's gonna make soldering these up really very simple. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna grab a couple zip ties, snug them on. Now, before I solder, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna make soldering much easier. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the process of soldering one of these up. So now I've gotta trim my wires to the correct length. If you cut them too short, you are gonna be in big trouble. All right, if you have extra wire and it's of decent length, make sure you save that. Now, another little trick, if you've got yourself one of these doohickeys right here, I'm a Milwaukee guy, Team Red, baby. What I'll do is I'll check the gauge of my wire. So that says 18. I know it's hard to read, but this is 18 gauge. And I'll look on here and boom, there she is, 18 gauge. Now, guess what? That'll make stripping these wires super super simple so I'll just go boom pop and then boom pop and then one last boom pop okay you want to try to keep them all about the same length nothing too crazy all right next up I'll take the wires and I'll actually pin them down to their pad here we go Alright, so there we are. I've got the first motor on, soldered up, and looking good. I've got a little bit of extra wire, but not too much. The next thing I need to do is I need to hit the other three motors. I'm going to go ahead and do that now, and then I'll meet you back here. All right, pilots, we are back. I've got all four motors on. They are soldered up and looking good. Look at that. If you are a DJI pilot, you open up the little baggie that it came with. You reach in, you pull out the plug that has the DJI connector, okay? Watch this. Then you go ahead and you flip over, you look at the back, you pop this in, okay? I hope you're watching this because I'm about to blow your freaking brain. Then you flop this over, you find the DJI connector, what? There she is right there, DJI. You plug that in, make sure it's nice and snug. And you are now done. And the idea of the way they set this up is you've got your arrow in the front, your DJI wires in the back. Look at that. And I'm gonna slide that down and oh my God, look at that. So I am literally done wiring. I can put the top plate on this and go fly, okay? That is how amazing this is. But I'm not done. I've got a couple other things I wanna do. 
nothing too crazy but it does involve a little bit of flashy so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this LED pack and I want to put these LEDs on now looking at this build I mean it's literally perfect just the way it is I hate to mess it up I hate to try to stick these somewhere um, the most ideal place to put them would be right here in the bottom so I think that's what I'm gonna do Although I would, I would like to go ahead and put them on the top right here. I mean, that would also be cool. I can zip tie them right there. So, all right, so these LEDs by HGLRC, they come with a little bit of heat shrink. I personally believe this heat shrink is very important. You need to make sure that your plug is plugged in where it says in and not where it says out unless you plan on daisy chaining. If you don't know much about LEDs or you're curious about LEDs, you want to know more about LEDs, I have a full on video that goes over how LEDs work, how to pick your LEDs, which LEDs you should pick, how to know what color they're going to be. You learn a little bit about the colors and then I show you how to program them on Betaflight. So if you're new to LEDs, go check that video out. I will make sure I put a link down in the video description. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and slide that over just like that. And then I'm gonna heat shrink that and that's gonna keep my connector in and keep my LED looking good. So let's go ahead and get the rest ready. All right, so now I've got my heat shrink on. I'm gonna go ahead and kick on my heat gun. Uh, I did find this stuff right here. I normally use this, but I found this. It's actually clear. It is Gorilla Glue brand, and this stuff is viciously strong. So lately, that's what I've been using on all my builds. Anytime I need some double-sided sticky, oh baby. Look at that, and you can you can almost not even tell it's on there because it's clear. And then after I peel it, I don't mess around. I'm going to stick it right away so nothing bad can happen. All right, now I'm going to follow that up with a zip tie. Let's go ahead and put one around it. I'm going to probably go right for the center. And then I'll cut this extra off. One down, a couple to go. All right, pilots, look at that. We've got all four LEDs on. I mean, yeah, it would be nice to not have to use a zip tie. And to be honest, I could probably get away without it. But how many crashes till you rip one of these off and you say, dang it, I should have just used a zip tie. That's why I put a zip tie on the motor wires and a zip tie on the LEDs. So the LEDs are now gonna serve a second purpose and what that's gonna be is, if I'm ever flying and I ever crash and bend a prop and decide to turtle mode or maybe I'm in a bad jam and I need to go ahead and just arm the quad and try to fly back even though it's not a good idea, I'm sure we've all been there, these will go ahead and protect my motor wires from prop strikes and I'd rather ruin a $5 LED than a $30 motor. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna take this one and we're gonna go to here and we're gonna pop that in. Just make sure it's seated all the way. All right, so all my LEDs are on, they're connected, they're nice and strong. So the last thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and we need to throw on some M3 nuts to get this locked down all the way. Before I do that, we need to get the last and final piece wired up. It is already heat shrinked. I feel like they have way too much excess here. The first thing I need to do is I need to get this wired up. It came with a plug, so it's, it's pretty much just plug it in and then we solder these up. It's very, very simple. You have five volts ground and then you have an in and out. But I do want to show you something really cool. So you saw how we plug and played with the DJI. You saw how we kind of plug and played with the LEDs. You saw how we plug and played with the ESC. I have not put one drop of solder on this flight controller. Now watch this. We're going to head back over to this trusty dandy bandy uh, bag of amazing connectors. And uh, yep, I think, yep, here it is. We go ahead and we take this connector right here. And it's long just in case you need it. 
And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just give it a little swirly dirly. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. And after you've done that, watch this. And I'm going to stick it inside of here. And then this just plugs and plays right into here. Look at that. Huh? Now my GPS is done. This is amazing. What's this? Oh, sticker pack. And I'm going to throw this up over the side just like that. Quite possibly, if I was smart, I would go up under to prevent that from ever having an issue coming out or anything along those lines. Now my goal, let me show you what I'm doing here because I'm putting this nylon nut on, but it's very, very important that when I come right here, I don't go too far. So you see the little bit of space in between? Now watch and learn. Okay, see what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go just to where the rubber meets the road. I'm not, my plan is not to lock it down at all. I just don't want this to have the capability of coming back up. See that? That is what we're looking for. So what I need to do is I need to go ahead and do that. I would do at least one more. If you have plenty of nuts, do them all. And all four of them are on. My flight controller is super tight. It's not going anywhere, but at the same time, I have plenty of vibration dampening. So let's go ahead and grab our DJI mount and let's grab both DJI antennas. So one and two, we'll drop them in just like yay. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and plug in the leads. All right, now setting these DJI antennas, if you have the MMCX antennas, it is difficult. I don't care who you are. I've never installed one that was easy. We got it on, it's snug, it's tight, our connections are made, and the black on red just looks really good. And it's just not looking good with the heat shrink. So I'm going to pop that out and I'm going to cut that off. Alright, I wanted to leave the heat shrink on to give me some protection, but it's just not going to happen. It's a nice snug fit, so we, we actually, we shouldn't even need the heat shrink. Now they gave you a little cut out in the back where your connector goes, which is definitely sweet to have. And let's go ahead and feed that through there. And I want to put on our camera. Camera's on, boom's on, boom ba doom ba dong. And then we'll lay that right there. We'll loop it around. Let's go ahead and plug in our GPS. Now let's go ahead and lock our GPS down so nothing bad happens with that. Now, something like this, you definitely want to be snug, but you don't want to be crazy. I mean, it's just TPU. I'm going to grab my nut driver, the one that actually drives with a driver, and I'm going to feed in the rest of these. All right, there you go. So that is our mount right there. So now we are ready to take this one and a screw grows through here and also goes through depending which uh, degree of angle you want we'll decide which screw you'll use here and you'll drop this on and drop this in there now of course what do we use we use a smoke stopper so i'm going to go ahead and put that in boom and then next i'm going to use a battery but before i do i want to kill the lights so you can see hopefully how awesome Who's ready? Let's go. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> it changes colors. Oh my god, look how bright that is. Oh man, this is wicked. Holy moly, if that don't give you an idea of how bright that is. Oh my god. This came out absolutely perfect now I've got a nice treat for you there's a when you press the button the little LED lights up but also it controls these so I don't know what's gonna happen but let's press the button who's ready 
Oh, we got the flashy flash. All right, so let's go ahead and unplug this guy before we end up smoking my DJI air unit. Ooh, which is hot, by the way. All right, pilots, that is going to do it for the HG LRC Sector 5 V3 frame build. This is the complete drone build. We've got HGLRC flight controller, LEDs, GPS, uh, TPU kit. I mean, this thing is locked and loaded with all the goodies. I've got these awesome motors on here. I'm truly excited to try this thing out. I say that we jump in the goggles and let's take this thing for a spin. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next one. Let's go. I'ma make a couple stacks, do exactly what I want to. Mix a couple tracks, get a lady that I'm drawn to. Turn up to the max, get me faded till I'm gone, dude. I do what I want, couldn't stop me if you wanted to. I just work hard, yeah, harder than the rest. Some people say I'm lucky, others saying that I'm blessed. But I keep my head down, cause I crave progress. You ain't never gonna stop me, cause it's my conquest. And I'm never gonna rest, yeah. And y'all don't know that I'm a soldier I always felt like I'm a loner When everybody thinks they know ya And y'all don't even know I own ya